The number one proof is what we have next. And I'm answering your question about what proof there is. Now, I gave NASA the benefit. About what of, specifically? About how they didn't go to the moon. They can't okay. leave Earth orbit. They okay. still can't leave Earth orbit. Are we talking about radiation belts now? No, I'm talking okay. about the footage of them faking being halfway to the moon. The foot. Okay, the footage. Okay. If you show. I do. After this, I would like to talk about the radiation belts, if that's okay. That's next after Perfect. this. Perfect. Right? And, and so, first, let's look at the slide, D8. This is at the beginning of the reel. I asked NASA for every video, every film from Apollo 11, figuring if they faked it, they're more likely to have made a mistake the first time they faked it. Now, keep in mind, I went from being the biggest fan, gaga, worshiping the Apollo 11 project with pictures on my wall everywhere I went like a shrine mm -hmm. to having an open mind that maybe they faked it to looking into it, being given a million dollars by somebody who builds rockets for NASA to investigate it, who said that they were fake, and then stumbling upon this evidence, which is what convinced me that they were fake. In fact, this footage was shown to two NBC news directors. They both agreed it proved that Apollo 11 never left Earth orbit, and they were threatened by the federal government not to broadcast it or to have their license pulled. So the first part you'll see in D8 is the slide that says not for public distribution. Oh, it's not popped up. There oh, we there go. we go. Okay. So there, that shows that this is not for public distribution. Now, the next clip is at the very... Yeah, let's, let's, let's read it. It says, this film of the Apollo 11 mission was produced as a report film by the Manned Spacecraft Center and is not for general public distribution. Yeah, I asked NASA for unedited footage, and everything I got was pre-edited with a voiceover, and it's the same footage over and over again on 10 different reels, exact same footage. Most reporters are satisfied with that. I'm investigating the possibility that they faked it, and I asked for everything, specifically unedited footage. I got this in one of the reel that was unedited. Now, at the very beginning of the reel, clip nine, which you're about to play, You'll hear NASA say, the TV picture looks great. Then there is exactly four seconds of dead air. You'll hear a third party that's not NASA, not the astronauts, presumably the CIA. And after four seconds go by, they tell Neil Armstrong in a private earpiece, talk. And then he starts speaking because he's claiming that he is halfway to the moon at this point in the mission. The timestamp mm -hmm. indicates, according to the script, that they're supposed to be halfway to the moon. In fact, they never left Earth orbit. They can't leave Earth orbit now, and there's a number of reasons for that. So, Charlie, have he, you ever seen this footage before? No, it's crazy. Okay. Yeah, it is crazy how corrupt the federal government is. Well, so I mean, they, you're calling me a liar. I never went to the moon. Well, obviously. I mean, okay. what, what a surprise. You knew who wow. you were going to be here. I you knew who know. was going to be here us, before you got here. Twelve of you us. You act like it's a surprise. It's I a am good a acting. surprise. I didn't know, realize that you did, You thought it was all a fake. You, you knew that. You, you no, reminded me of our phone conversation 20 years ago when you walked in the door that I said we had, I had, con you re you quoted me I showed word you for word. His, I showed you his website That I had proof you came down that here. we didn't go to the moon. You knew when he invited yeah. you. This is no surprise. And yet you're acting like you're surprised. Surprise. This is why you should get the Academy Award. Now, the right. reason is if he's halfway to the moon, there would be an estimated two second radio time there and two seconds back. So they're faking sure. a radio delay. Okay. You'll hear NASA. You'll hear four seconds go by. You'll hear a third party that's not NASA, not the astronauts, prompt Neil Armstrong with talk. And that way they can fake the four second radio delay. Go ahead and play clip nine. Okay, so and where, hang, how was it? Was it where, where did you get your, get this stuff from again? From NASA. NASA sent you this. Mm -hmm. Bill and, and, Casey, and a one contract. second, one second, one second. They sent it to you by mistake. Either that or someone, one of my sources at NASA who said the missions were fake, thinks a whistleblower sent it to me. Okay. Uh, and so... Hold on, Charlie, what do you make of that? 
I don't understand what he's talking about here, but the missions were not fake. They, no, well, okay. I, I, they sent me to the moon. And we understand that. You've the been video, saying that for 56 and, and, years. Hold on, Bart. The, the footage that we just watched was from Apollo 11. Could you hear it? Can you hear it in your headphones? It's, it's Houston communicating with the astronauts on the radio. And then you hear a four second delay. And then you can hear the audio of someone going, talk. And then you hear Neil Armstrong responding to Houston. Let's watch it one more time. Let's show okay, Charlie one more time. I didn't time. get that. Yeah, let's show him one more time. Just read the text. Hello, oh, Apollo 11. Houston, Gulf Dawn says that the TV looks so great. Over. Two, three, four. Okay, uh, Roger Burger. Does that, does that make sense? Houston, no. Gulf Dawn they can't leave Earth orbit today, and great. they can't Over. leave Earth orbit in 1969. So the footage is, is is footage of the moon, and you you could hear Neil talking to Houston, right? In that video clip, yeah, yeah, you could hear them talking, and there's a little voice that pops up after four seconds that says "talk" to Neil. Why would there be a voice? I don't know. I telling no Neil idea. to talk. Yeah. Okay. He has are no they are on the moon, or are they they're halfway in right? They're supposed to be halfway. To so the this moon. is when they were halfway to the moon, communicating with Houston. And after Houston said something on the radio, there was four seconds and then somebody on the radio saying, talk to Neil, instructing Neil to respond to Houston after four seconds. Why do you think that would be? I don't know. Okay. I've, I've, it, uh, in my recollection, in mich I, in mich I was in mission control for Apollo 10. Mm -hmm. I was Capcom. I was in mission control for Apollo 11, mm -hmm. it's Capcom. And uh, nothing like this ever happened in mission control. No, there would never be anybody saying talk to anybody. No. It would just be as soon as you hear it, you would respond. Generally, that was true, yeah. Okay, what were the exceptions? Uh, I can't think of any right now, but I mean, if, Say again, Houston, or say you—you you, a lot of reasons that, that uh, you mission control had uh, not mission control, but uh, uh, we had uh, problems, scratchy communication. So if you couldn't understand, yeah, okay, I see. Yeah. What you're say again, what, so whatever. Yeah, okay. except the quality, the EQ of the audio of talk is completely different. It's not obviously okay. NASA Understood. Who, just, who just spoke, right. and it's not Neil Armstrong who responded. They're faking a four-second radio delay to pretend that they're beyond okay. Earth orbit. So this is him. So so Bart's position is that video with them say with the voice coming in and saying talk is them trying to fake a four second delay. That's part of his argument. So, so what, I mean, I don't, I don't That's understand. That's just one of his arguments is that there, because you hear the, the voice come in and say talk, the talk comes in four seconds after Houston finishes their statement, right? So the presumption from Bart is there's no delay, but they, the astronauts, were instructed to wait for four seconds until someone else came in and said, talk. That way it would look like there was a four second delay and it would look like they were already halfway to the moon. Right, because if you play clip 11, Neil Armstrong for the TV audience, the part that was shown to the public, says he's calling in from about 130,000 miles out. Right. Halfway to the moon, go ahead and play clip 11. Hi Roger, Houston, Apollo 11. In from about miles out. Okay, so that's him lying. He's not 130,000 miles out. He's still in Earth orbit. That's why they faked the four-second radio delay. Now play clip 10. Is this the is this the photo of them faking the window thing? Almost the one okay, before. Okay, okay. Let's try to let's try to go through this. We have a lot to cover, and we're almost two hours in. We only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with the TV camera. Okay, so go back to clip 11, the, the 130,000 miles out. Don't play the audio, but just bring up the image and you can hit pause so we can see the image. So according to Neil Armstrong, there's only one window that has a view of the earth 
and it's filled up with the TV camera because if Make sure you, you're talking to the mic. Oh yeah. So if you were really halfway to the moon, looking back at the Earth like this appears to demonstrate, even though it's a fake shot, you would have to have the lens of the camera to the window in order to shoot the Earth far away floating in space. He says, he's lying, 130,000 miles out, and he says that the camera is completely filling up the window. That's a lie too. The camera is really at the back of the spacecraft. There's about 15 feet between the camera and the window. They've turned out all the lights, which they talk about because they thought these conversations would be edited out. And that's actually the circular window of the spacecraft outside of which it's filled with the Earth and low Earth orbit. One photographer, cinematographer, believes they took a, a transparency, a positive, a slide of the Earth photograph from a satellite and placed it over the window that was backlit by Earthshine. Now, if you play the final clip, um, oh, the, the D11, play it all the way through to revealing. So play 11 one more time. There are two clips on 11. So this is supposed into the to mic, be- Into the mic, oh. No, just let it play at normal speed. This is supposed to be the Earth, but that's fine. This is supposed to be the Earth floating in space. This is the outtake. That's why it said, do not show to the public. There's Buzz Aldrin removing part of the effect in front of the window. That's a work light. The camera has been at the back of the spacecraft the entire time. The iris is opened and you can see the real location and the very bright Earth out the window. They just faked being halfway to the moon. My critics agree. That is them faking being halfway to the moon. Two NBC news directors agree. That is them faking being halfway to the moon. And they were told by the federal government if they broadcast it, they would have their license pulled. <clears throat> so go to sabrell.com. All of these clips can be seen there for free. This is what convinced me. I gave NASA the benefit of the doubt for as long as possible. And when I saw this, they are faking halfway way to the moon. So if you could really go to the moon, why would you be faking any of it? And if you're faking being halfway to the moon, it's because you can't go halfway to the moon. And what a surprise, 56 years later, they still cannot leave Earth orbit, only mannequins can. And we'll go on to why next, which is the Van Allen radiation belt. All right, hold on, let's put a pause there. So Charlie, on your trip on Apollo 16, did you guys ever turn around and and take film or footage or any photos of the moon or i'm sorry of the earth when you were about halfway uh i'm sure that we did i don't remember specifically but mm -hmm. we were if you uh, were if you were to take a video or a film of the earth on your way to the moon how would you do it well you turn a window to the earth and uh and the there was a I had a window right up here, which was a triangle. I had a window right over here. Uh, and in zero gravity, it, you had to hold a camera up to the window, towards the window. Okay. And of uh, the object you had out there. So it, you could do it from any window. It, uh, it just depends on how you oriented the spacecraft. So, okay. So you would be able to orient the spacecraft while you're traveling to the moon yeah. to line up a window with the Earth. Yeah, sure. Okay. And so... Roughly, how big is how big is that spacecraft? How big is the interior? Mm, less than the re uh, if I'm in my couch, I can reach out and touch the the in my suit, and I can reach out and touch the side of the spacecraft. Okay, John Young on liftoff, uh, it was Manningly. I could he was touching my shoulder, mm -hmm. and on the other side, he was touching uh, uh, John's shoulder, mm -hmm. and John was reaching out and touching the side of the spacecraft. But the so command rough, module, hold up, hold up, roughly, the command roughly, module. Yeah, the command and service module were coupled together, so there was actually more depth than that. Okay, no, so, and, and the, no, no, and the, not in the spacecraft, it wasn't. They were, they were, the service module was hooked to the command, the command module was sat on top of the service module, and you, and we, received a lot of stuff from the service module but the uh, the command module was a separate entity and okay. and uh, didn't have a c connection there were electrical connections and right. service connections but there weren't any 
uh, pathway. You couldn't go there. You couldn't go there. Got it. Okay. And so you're saying it was roughly about maybe the size, the the length of this table, maybe a little bigger. Mm, it's probably this table probably wider than the Apollo spacecraft was. Okay. And but so depth so, wise, it's so the table. So when you were Let's just say hypothetically, you're on your way to the moon on Apollo 16. You would look back. You want to take a shot of the Earth at halfway, right? You're halfway to the moon. How would you position the camera inside the spacecraft well, to shoot the off, Earth? The first off, you'd have to get a window looking at the Earth. Right. Okay. Right. And you could get the window. You face the Earth. It was a there was a triangular window here and a window here for me. How, how what's, what what was the shape of the other window for you? I think it was a sort of a triangular shape. Triangular yeah, shape, yeah. okay. Anyway, you could get up there with a camera and just look out. And if if the spacecraft was not rotating mm -hmm. the held position, then you could just reach out and just they start taking pictures with your Hasselblad or the 16 millimeter camera we had. We didn't waste film though. And you would put it basically right smack dab up to the window. No, no. Sometimes you would. Okay. Okay. Depends on uh, what you were trying to what you were trying to look at. If the Earth was out there and you wanted to get right close, so you could see the whole of the Earth, you would. Mm -hmm. You could get back, and uh, you could see you could still see the Earth out there, but it was like you were looking through a four foot of air in a spacecraft so you'd want to get up right next to it to get right a next good to the picture window. yeah right and how fast was, was the craft moving at that point halfway it varied it uh roughly well it took 72 hours to get to the moon it's 200 and something thousand miles so on average it it uh 3, miles an hour 3,000 miles an hour okay <laughs>